Good morning, it's Bishop Frank Dupre with another drive-by message. It's a bright sunny day here and I'm on my way to church and I'm going to have church with you right now. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47. And while you're turning there, don't forget you can go to my website www.frankdupre.com and get other messages, teachings, and videos and links to different things like that, okay? All right, Ezekiel 47. I want to just talk to you a little bit about the river, okay? Uh, uh, Ezekiel says that the, the man of God, the angel of the Lord, had brought him to the throne, to the river, and he saw the river, the water, was at the very beginning of its edge. It was ankle deep. And then he measured out a certain amount of feet, and then it came to the place where the river was knee deep. And then he went a little further, and the, the river was up to his loins, up to his waist. And then he went further, and each time he measured the same amount, and then it came a place where you couldn't walk in it. Uh, it was too deep for walking. You swam in that river. So it was a river to swim in. And so there's four different stages in the river of God. And there's four. Four is a great number. There's four corners of the earth. There are four winds. And there are, there are uh, four gospels. Four is a, uh, an important number. Did you know there are four kinds of Christians? The Apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, As babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so babes are those who get saved and they are, they're hungry and thirsting for God and they're seeking God. They want to get to know more about God. Then there's another one. Let's go to, let's go to 1 John chapter 2. And John says, he says, I write to you, <clears throat> little children. And then he says, and I write to you, fathers. And then he says, I write to you, young men. So he names three more kinds of Christians. Now the little children, uh, the little children, these are, these are the ones that are, they're, they're not babes, but they're not young men. So they're in the middle, kind of teenage years, let's say. And these are the ones that we get an idea about in the scripture by the apostle Paul in Ephesians 4, when he says, don't be little children anymore, blown back and forth by every new doctrine that comes around. So little children we see as unstable. Okay, now let's go to the water for a second and put these two together. And then we'll add the others. Okay, so we have water to the ankles, water to the knees. Well, you can't put a little child uh, out in deep water. A little child can get past the ankle deep water though and get into the knee deep water and play. A babe is in there for the ankle deep water. That's all. They can play by the shore, enjoy that water, sit on the side, let the waves of the, of the, the river lap them uh, on their feet and everything and have a great time. And see, being a babe in Christ is a wonderful time. You know, you're in the river of God and you know things are great, you got a great future and you're happy. But if you start growing in God and growing in Christ uh, and you're not desiring that sincere milk of the word so you can grow, if you stop reading the word of God, guess what happens? You start getting tossed in back by all kinds of teachings and doctrines and, and this church and that church and this preacher and that guy and all this stuff and you end up unstable weak in the knees you become a christian who's stuck at knee deep you're not going any further then he says uh, john says there are young men that he writes to and these are young men and the, the river relates to young men with water to the waist Water to the waist or water to the loins. Well, your, your loins are your repro is your reproductive area. Young men are those who have passed through the childhood stage of instability and immaturity and begun to move into maturity. Now, in the Bible, a young man was a man up to 40 years of age. So this is a person who is not 20 years old only. I mean, this could be 20 and this could be up to 40 years of age. When Jesus began his ministry, he was a young man. And so young men are in the reproductive age of their life. They're the ones who are overcomers. In fact, John the Apostle says, he says, I, I write to you young men because you've overcome the world. And see, these are people who've overcome the lust of the flesh, the, 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 inst the immaturity of their life, and they become stable. And now they're doing the thing that God wants them to do. They're reproducing. They're bringing other souls into the kingdom. Those little children aren't bringing anybody in the kingdom. They're just running around and they're doing their thing and they're playing their games. There's, there's a new thing going on called grave sucking. They're going to the graves of great men and women of God of the past and laying on the grave and, and sucking their anointing. How silly is that? I mean, that's, that's not a little child thing to do. I don't know what it is. I don't think you'd ever see Jesus telling people, let's go down to the grave of Moses or let's go to the grave of King David and suck uh, the grave, you know, and get the anointing from there. Crazy stuff goes on in the church, you know. But anyway, so we got babes playing in the in the in the ankle deep water, and thank God they're babes in Christ. They're born again. They're saved. They're on their way to heaven someday. Praise God. Little children playing in that knee deep water. Got to grow. Got to get out of that stuff. Stop being tossed back and forth by everything that's brand new. 
And then young men getting into that place of security, getting into that place of strength, getting into that place of overcoming. And then the last one, uh, John mentions is, I write to you fathers because you know him. And you see, a father is a man who knows God. A father is a man who has had his reproductive years. A father is a man who has brought souls into the kingdom, raised up sons in the kingdom. A father is an apostle or an apostolic figure, an apostolic leader who has maturity, who has uh, gone through his general years, let's say, into the patriarchal years of his life. He may be still a general, uh, but he's still, but he's going in that patriarchal stage where now he's fathering, now he's mentoring, now he's training, now he's guiding and leading. He's got a whole nother position, a whole nother aspect of his life of powerful, tremendous maturity in Christ. And you know, we need fathers in the spirit. When I was a young man, uh, and I was in my overcoming years and search. I was searching for a father. I was looking for someone to be in my life, to give me the guidance of, of, of the years of wisdom that they had, to give me the, the, the wisdom of the word of God that they knew, to give me stability and help me in my personal times of need and to be there for me and that I might honor someone as a father because the Bible says you honor your mother, your father in the Lord. It'll go well with you in the land that I give to you. So I wanted that reciprocal relationship of a father. And I found a father after many years of searching in the late Dr. Wade Taylor. And if you have a chance, you go look up Dr. Wade Taylor, Wade E. Taylor. You find his books. Get, get his book, The Secret of the Stairs, Changed My Life. And he's a, he was not just a father figure to me. He truly was a father and became a great friend. And uh, stayed at my house many times. Uh, loved being with us. We loved being with him. And I thank God for his input his impact, his impartation into my life. And now I'm working and serving um, with Apostle John Kelly for the past 15 years. And this is a, uh, a relationship where he, he is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Apostle Kelly is one of the greatest leaders in the whole church world today. This man travels across the globe, raising up coalitions of apostolic leaders and being a father to many. He's a great man of God. And you can find out more about him by visiting uh, the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders, and it's called iCalLeaders.com. Uh, you can check out also other leaders uh, like Bishop Joseph Matera, uh, myself. Go to uscal.us, that's uscal.us, and find out what we're doing in this nation as we are raising up sons and we're working with other men of God and women of God and doing great things. So it's going to be Father's Day soon. Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers out there. Keep growing. You know, anybody can have kids, but it takes a father to raise them up. And so that's why we want to honor fathers and we want to honor our fathers in the Lord. And the last thing, I want to honor my father in the natural, who's also by, uh, actually probably my best friend, Frank C. Dupre, Apostle Frank C. Dupre, out in Riverhead, New York. And uh, he is a great man of God. We have become so close that I truly call him my best friend. We talk for hours on the phone. Uh, he's still preaching. He's 85 years old, still preaches once a month has a great meeting out in Riverhead, New York. And you can visit him by going to Power and Dominion uh, Ministries. Anyway, God bless you today. I hope you enjoyed this message today. I want to ask you a question now when I close. Which one are you? Are you a babe in Christ? Praise God. Are you a little child? Time to grow up. Are you a young man? Amen. Keep reproducing and, and do the work of God. Overcome. Are you a father? Keep on raising up those sons and maturing them and bringing them to glory. Amen. For it was God's will to bring many sons into glory. God bless you now. In Jesus' name.